Hello, I'm Gustavo Cariconde, and you are at StartupSpace.io. We are an accelerator program designed to help uh, startups, multi sign platform startups, to enable interactions, generate a lot of network effect, and finally grow critical mass of users. And today, I have the pleasure to speak with Bradley Pride. He's a strategy consultant at Applico. Applico is a consulting firm in the US and they are specialists in platforms. And uh, actually the CEOs of Applico, they wrote this book here, which is a book that we use on our program. And it's called Modern Monopolies, one of the best books about um, how to design uh, multi-site platforms. Hello, Brad. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good. You want to talk a little bit about uh, the work that you do with with uh, multi-site platforms? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, Applico is it's a, a boutique consultancy. Um, we're very different than your average strategy consultancy in that we're a group of entrepreneurs who have had experience in um, platform businesses. Now that goes to the extent of raising 120 million to as myself being a CEO that sold one. Uh, it's come several all over my colleagues have raised 40 million, sold their uh, platform businesses. So we're a, a group of entrepreneurs that then engage larger Fortune 500s to build out platform businesses. So the Fortune 500 has specialized in whatever industry they are. They're not necessarily specialists in the platform business because very few people are. The people who are specialists in the platform business are the CEO of Uber, the CEO of Airbnb. It's a very new business model which has been enabled by technology. Now we bring our experience to Fortune 500 and help them establish exactly where it makes sense for them to build it out in their industry, even their expertise. Right, and Bradley, uh, I know that uh, uh, the platforms, they are becoming more and more popular, uh, but many people still uh, don't know exactly how to recognize a real platform and differentiate for, from other, other, other business models. Could you uh, explain a little bit more uh, what are the, the unique differences from platforms to other models? Yeah, so I think the easiest way to think about a platform business is that it's a marketplace. Uh, it's as simple as that, but I understand it gets confusing at some point in time. So using some examples would be definitely be useful. Now, what is a marketplace? A marketplace is where buyers and sellers come together to transact. Now, what a platform business is core is facilitating value within that transaction. So I'll give an example. Airbnb, they don't own any houses. They don't own any hotels. What they do is they own a piece of technology an established network of people that though they're the de facto place to come for renting out your apartment on a short-term basis. They've done that because they've had such a good business development and go-to-market strategy, but also because they continuously add value to that transaction. That is purely their focus. Another one is Uber. There was always drivers who were you know, ad hoc hire, ready to give you a lift at one time, every point in time. It was just such a fragmented uh, industry in terms of supply. So it wasn't consistent. You didn't have um, a, a same person to go to in every city as they grew. That became you know, very consistent where you went. Uh, and you didn't, yeah, you didn't have a way to constantly get the same experience all the time. Uber facilitated value to that transaction. I think a, a good example of, of Uber giving a good um, value to transaction in large part was London. So London, it's um, New York City set up on a grid. There's still value for Uber because you can just call it at any point in time. In London, taxi drivers are actually given a, um, a test, right? Because this the, low, the roads were made very long time ago. It's all over the place. Um, and because of that test, they can charge a higher amount. But now with the advent of GPS, Uber is able to come in there and say, most people we can get on the road to come in, and show them to follow a GPS. We can charge a lot less and people come on demand. At that point in time, London taxis weren't even taking credit cards, right? So Uber had a huge dominance and value add to the transaction within that market. So you can go even go on from, um, that's more of the ones that people are familiar with, but a lot of times people don't think about Apple as a platform business. Now the reason that Apple is and isn't, they're both linear, linear in the sense that they sell an iPhone to a retailer and then directly to you. But why they've been able to dominate, one of the, the key reasons among others, is because they had a platform approach to their phone. And what I mean by platform approach to their phone is they opened up a software platform which allowed developers to develop apps and then consumers to come in and buy them 
instead of restricting uh, that network, they allowed people to create software for their phone and therefore it became a lot more interesting. There's a lot more people participating in it. You can get a lot more. Right. Uh, and uh, comparing to, to other business models, would you say the platform business model is the, is the, is the, is the best one today nowadays in the world? Do, you, do we have any evidence that the world is changing and there are rooms there, there are placed there for, for, for more platforms? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, is it the best business model? I mean, I think that highly depends on your industry, uh, whether or not there is room for it, obviously. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a broad question, but I, do I think it's an amazing, naturally, yeah, I think it's a great business model. And the reason why I think that um, is because if you think about the weakness of any market or industry, it's the fact that you have to take a niche for the most part, um, unless you're a monopoly, which obviously that's governmentally regulated, but you have to take a niche. And then that niche that you take or whatever specialty you take will be dependent on certain fluctuations that happen within that market. So let's say that you're a steel uh, provider. You may start specializing in a certain kind of steel. Now you're heavily at risk to the fluctuations of that metal. And there's a multitude of different things that can uh, affect it. So let's say you're doing aluminum actually. Uh, and now the price of aluminum trade with China is going to affect it. Now what isn't going to change? Now the prices of the market will change with or without your favor. But what isn't going to change is the fact that there is going to be transactions happening within that industry. So as a platform business, you are always going to benefit from the transactions happening, not necessarily what fluctuations are happening around that transaction. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. And uh, what what are the main f functions of a platform? What what do platforms do if if they're not uh, managing inventory and managing the pipelines and taking care of you know hedging their the risks uh, on the markets? What what, what they do uh, as the platform manager? What what they should be focused on doing? Yeah, I think the key thing is finding exactly where you can add value to the transaction and ensuring that you are doing, stopping it, nothing to make sure that happens. Now, as a derivative of that, there's a lot of work that goes into play. A lot of people focus on technology. Uh, a lot of people focus on, um, well, they focus on all aspects. So it's technology, is ensuring that your partner, your key partner suppliers are happy and that you're keeping them happy by providing value to them as well as the customer. So I'll give one example of a, um, can't really call it a startup anymore, but it's, um, it's a technology company called Ritual. Uh, it's out of New York, and it's, um, I think everybody knows about Uber Eats, so I think this is a relatively special case. The way they, um, their business is essentially giving people the ability to order ahead and pick up food in stores near them, in major cities. Now, you're going to say e-commerce sites already do that, right? So there's two ways in which they add value. It was A, adding value to the, the um, transaction, but then also being the marketplace for that area. So instead of having like every single one of your fast food place, you know, like McDonald's, KFC, et cetera, all within your phone, that's going to dominate your entire phone with all those apps. You can just go to one app and have that. So that's the creation of the marketplace. That's very important that you get the marketplace on and you have to give value to your suppliers in that instance. Now, beyond that, you want the consumers to use it. And the way you're going to get on the consumers to use it is to somehow add value to their experience. So yeah, consumer can just go straight to e website and pick it up. So how are you going to do that better? So in Ritual's case, a big factor that they used was piggyback. Uh, what piggyback was essentially when you go to order um, food uh, online, you then um, get a notification that's sent to all of your colleagues. And your colleagues have an opportunity to jump on the back of your order. You go down there, you get points, which eventually you can turn into cash. And you get all your colleagues' foods. You bring it back up to them, and they get free delivery. So they have of that quite complicated technology from a logistical standpoint. Uh, many other things that they did as well that really helped them um, get their suppliers down and get the uh, consumers as well.